Welcome to How to Garden. We're going to go for a little walk here. And I'm going to show you what you need to know. And right there. And another one right there. Now there used to be a really big one. Way back in the back corner. You haven't been able to access this lot for a couple of years. Because it had severely overgrown. But as you can tell by all the little pine trees. They came through here. And they cleared inside this lot too. There were three or four gentlemen in here. With chainsaws and machetes. For about a week. And they thinned it out real good. So let's see if that other blueberry survived all these years. It had been back here. And it's not here. But its descendants are. That one's got berries. And there's another one right there. And that's the big leafed one. You don't see those produce as often or well as frequently or as young in age as the little leafed one but here they are you've got berries a bunch of them back here but the berries on this variety usually come in to ripeness about a month later than the other variety i guess it's a good way for them not to cross pollinate Although cross-pollinization and hybridization of these two do occur naturally. Now the third variety is found in swampy areas around the same type of pines. But it does not grow in central Florida. It grows in north Florida. These two varieties I just showed you grow all over Central Florida. And if you're in Brevard County, they are everywhere. Same with Indian River County. They're absolutely everywhere. <coughs> oh. That's what you need to look for to be able to find them. Pine trees. Evidence of clearing or thinning because it needs to be open for them to get the light. Look for a fire or mechanically that it's been cleared. Naturally, it's fire. And if you look right here, you can see indications of the last fire that ripped through here, which was about 10 years ago. And you'll find blueberries, if, but you need to be able to identify them. There are fakes. There are several mock blueberries that grow here and they're really simple to figure out when you go pick the berry you'll find the berries hollow and crunchy on the outside so when you pick it it'll just kind of crunch in your fingers that's a mock blueberry that's fake it's a completely different plant oh there's what they look like this is a small leaf variety. It is absolutely everywhere here. Oh, I found me a couple more berries to pick. There's one. There's the other. As you can see, it's growing in conjunction with this mimosa. That mimosa is a nitrogen fixer. There's a couple more. And a couple more. You gotta watch where you step when you're doing this because the babies will be everywhere. Now they do grow relatively easy from seed. So if you don't want a chance digging one up, because honestly, I've only gotten like a 1 in 18 chance of them surviving. 
In other words, I dug up 17 of them before I got one that lived. Now, you can take the berries, and they're full of seed. They do grow relatively easy from seed in a pot, but it needs to be an acidic soil mix. The way I handle that is by taking a bunch of pine needles from the area and I make sure I cover the top of the soil with a couple inches of them and then I'll add a little bit of sulfur you can get sulfur or soil acidifier just about anywhere and put a little bit of that on there you know keep them nice and acidic just the way they like it oh. there's just blueberries everywhere thanks for watching you have a great day right here real nice ones this one got bowled over by some type of animal there's a little pathway there the other ones that were right here got completely choked out by the vegetation. So this particular variety has adapted to producing small. Now this ver same variety you'll get four or five feet tall, but very, very seldomly. Now you can find them pretty much everywhere in Brevard County in the empty lots. Most people have no idea they're here. It's a lot of work to pick them because they're very tiny berries. They're wild. They don't get as big as the uh, domesticated ones. Let's walk over here and I'll show you some something else. Because not only does the fire clear the way for them, but... The county mower will as well. This lot we're looking at here got prepared for them to put this box in. And they came around and they mowed down in an extra 15 or so feet. After they mowed it down, blueberries popped up. There's one with a berry on it. Now, most of these are pretty small. There had been blueberries on this lot eight, nine years ago when I first moved in. And then it got overgrown. See. That one's got some good berries. And they're just everywhere through here. There's also another plant that moved in after they did that. And that is this mimosa. These are cool. Touch the leaves and they'll close up. Takes them a minute though. That is a nitrogen fixture. That mimosa is feeding these blueberries. Oh, look. look. There's a ripe one right there. I'm just going to have to eat that. There's another one, and another one. There's another one with berries. Another one with berries. Here's another ripe berry. So there are wild blueberries all over Florida. You can find them in the cities, out in the woods. But what you're looking for, are pines a relatively open area in conjunction of the pines either it having been cleared mechanically relatively recently or a fire now this particular lot got cleared by both same fire that damaged 
across the street came through this lot. Here's the other species of blueberry right here.